good man. I drink so much whiskey, mama. I can only talk, only talk. I know only talk. I drink so much whiskey. I can only talk, only talk. Well, it's on that on my brain. People I can hardly walk. Before I went away, baby, when you drove me away, you drove me away. Sweet mama, you drove me away. My poor love, Alright, that was Drive Away Blues by Blind Willie McTell, recorded in 1929. Certainly one of his most challenging pieces, but I've gone ahead and transposed it and arranged it for lesson anyways. This song is going to cover a lot of ground in learning the uh, particular intricacies and stylings of McTell's playing in the key of E. So thanks again for joining along with these lessons. All of these McTell lessons are coming out this spring in conjunction with my new ebook release on my website store, www.deltalumusic.com. The new ebook is the McTell Pre War Recordings ebook. It's a selection of nine songs that we're going over through all these video lessons, nine songs across uh, all in standard tuning, across four keys that McTell like to play in. And once you get through this ebook, you'll be able to learn his other songs with ease. So Drive Away Blues is one of my favorite songs by McTell. It's a enigmatic, deep, rich melodies based in the key of E. So to begin, all you need is an acoustic guitar. Again, McTell liked to play uh, the 12 string guitar, which he was most famous for using. Uh, but for these purposes, let's go ahead and use a six string guitar for now. I like to utilize plastic finger picks it, because my finger's a little bit frail. It allows me to play the strings uh, so there's a crisp tonality and resonance when I pluck the strings, right? <clears throat> the other thing that you need to, uh, before watching all of my lessons, is watch my beginning finger picking blues volumes one through four, which is available for free. And I have the supplemental ebook that. Uh, takes you step by step. So for my beginners, definitely watch that before you start watching the other lessons. I always like to talk about the right hand positioning in playing this kind of music, Delta Blues or Ragtime. With the outer lining of the palm of your hand, you always want to have it hover above the fifth and sixth strings. Your thumb is going to be hovering atop the fifth string, available to play the alternating bass accompaniments on the sixth, fourth, sixth fifth, and fourth strings. Your index and middle finger are going to be playing the first, second, and third strings, the treble strings, in conjunction with the thumb. So you'll have these pinching, uh, these pinching matters. When you play chords, it's like a combination of pinching together and finger picking. So that's this, uh, that's emphasized in detail in my beginning uh, finger picking lessons one through four. So please watch that before we start here. So we have the right hand technique. Uh, down pat, we've got an acoustic guitar. Use an acoustic guitar, don't do this on an electric guitar, especially with folk and old music. And, um, and in order to begin Drive Away Blues, uh, the easiest thing to do is get the ebook. So, because I follow along step by step on what I'm reading on the ebook, you have all of these, these parts tabbed out for the introduction, the verse great chord diagrams, I have the scale laid out and whatnot, lyrics and everything you need to know to learn the song. It's really a great resource, definitely check it out. And um, so moving on, we have to talk about tuning the guitar. So Drive Away Blues, the past four lessons that we've had with McTell, we've down tuned the guitar to D standard tuning from E to D, and then we tune a semitone up to D sharp. Well, this song is even lower in tuning. 
So whereas in standard tuning, your top string is gonna be an E, well here, we're gonna down tune the top string to C sharp. This song is played in C sharp tuning, and additionally, he, he, tunes, he tunes it a semitone up from C sharp, so you're in between C sharp and D, a, a, a semitone in between those two. For some reason, McTell liked to play where, where his tuning was sitting right on that semitone in between the two pitches. That's very imperative to understand. A, a lot of McTell's music is down tuned lower, so you're gonna have to get used to down tuning your guitar, uh, lowering your machine, machine heads, down tuning. So with my lessons, I try to capture what is being played in the original recording so that if you wanted to play along with McTell, you would be in lockstep with the, in the same pitch as he was. So this song is tabbed the 1929 version. So I'm, we're looking at the pre-war recordings. We're not looking at the Atlanta 12 string album, which was produced in 1949. We will, our lessons are not covering any songs to feature out of that because they were tuned in even lower keys. Uh, but so we're looking at the pre-war recording and now let's go ahead and tune our guitars together so we have the same pitch and we're matched in the same way. So my top string is gonna go from an E to a C sharp plus and the, here it sound, here is the first sound. A C sharp plus, a semitone between C sharp and D. Now this is my fifth string, which is going to be in uh, F sharp plus. My fourth string is gonna be a B plus. My third string is going to be an E plus. My second string is going to be a G sharp plus. And then finally my bottom string is going to be a C sharp plus. So let's go ahead and finger an E chord this song is going to be in the key of E. And uh, some of the elements of, of this song are going to feature in future lessons, same ideas and whatnot. If you have watched uh, my lesson, Writing Paper Blues, definitely watch that lesson first before playing this because a lot of the same things are going to translate here to carry over into this song. The A chord, and then the C sharp St. Louis turnaround features in this song as well. Definitely watch Writing Paper Blues. <clears throat> All right, so enough babbling on about that. It's just important for me to establish that tuning is going to be dictating how you play McTell's music. It's essential to get that down pat. So let's uh, stick around and we'll go over the introduction. All right, so moving on into the introduction. Before we begin, I have the E blues scale listed in the first position. I have a, a layout there, a tablature of the scale ascending and descending. And why I put that out there is because Mc, a lot of McTell's riff structure is being extracted from out of this E blues scale. And that blues scale sounds like this. <laughs> picking out uh, uh, riffs and melodies based out of that scale. So what that is, is I'll play it, I'll play it here since uh, if you don't have the ebook with you, I'll just kind of explain it here. So to play this scale, you play the top string open, then the third fret, top string. Now you go down to the fifth string and you play that open. First fret, second fret, then go down to the fourth string, play that open. First fret, second fret. And then keep on going, go to the third string, play that open. Second fret, third fret. 
down to the second string open, play the third fret, then you play the bottom string open, then the third fret bottom string, then play the bottom string open. So it's. And that's something that we cover in R.L. Burnside's music, McTell's, Mississippi Fred McTowell. All of them are extracting notes out of this scale. So you'll see how it, it injects itself into most of these compositions. So now that we've got the E blue scale um, down pat, you always use that as a reference to come back to. The introduction now is, is going to be a pretty complicated. It's very difficult. And, um, and it's going to sound a little bit like this. So I'll play some. There's a lot happening here, but again, he's playing these uh, solo runs that are based in this scale. <clears throat> so the first four notes of this song, he he kind of flicks on an E chord. So finger an E chord and flick on the third string. You play that while holding the E chord. You flick with the index finger on the third string open, and then with the index finger. Uh, fret, the first fret, third string. He likes to play this lick, right? So he plays one, two, and then he plays the bottom string open, and then ends with the top string open. So the four notes are... That's the introduction, you'll hear it right away in the original recording. One, two, three, four. And then he leads into this riff, which uh, is, is very unique. It's the only time in the song that it appears as such, but it's going to sound like this. Something like this. So it's uh, and and to do that, you are going to play. Uh, there's let's see, and all there's quite a few notes here. So I'll play the first. I'll I'll play the first eight notes in this measure. So the first note is in the bottom string. Then you go up to the second string, third fret. One, two, and then here is where it's going to be the signature characteristic in this riff. He's going to play this uh, minor second interval run between the 4th fret 3rd string and the 3rd fret 3rd string. It's kind of like the Beethoven or whatever. And he plays this combination uh, five times. One, two, three, four, five. So in all from the beginning it's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm playing uh, this with a thumb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then he shifts over to the second fret, third string. And then he plays the open string and the third string. Or, uh, yeah. Or, uh, yes, that's correct. And then he ends on the fourth uh, string, second fret. Followed by the open string on the top string. So that riff is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, it's being extracted out of this scale. So when he's playing the fourth string on the third string, it's basically also a B, a second string open. So he 
if you don't want to play the fourth fret, you can always play the second string open. But I feel that he's really playing the fourth fret, third string in this instance. So that's that first part of the riff, again, extracted out of the scale. And then he, the second part of this introduction sounds like this. And that's the, the, the most signature riff in this whole song, the most famous to identify it. And, in, and to play this, um, I play it with, you're fingering the E chord, and the pinky is going to be free to play the corresponding notes that are extracted out of this riff and scale. So again, this is a, a pattern that we're noticing throughout his lessons. He'll finger a chord and his index finger will pop off to play a lick and his pinky will pull off to play a lick. And so this one sounds like this. <clears throat> and once you get the speed, it will sound very close to McTell. <clears throat> so anyways, while holding the E chord, we're gonna play uh, the notes to come out of here. There's, so there's eight notes in all. So again, you, you're fingering the E chord and the first three notes are gonna be the bottom string open. Then you play up to the second string, third fret, second string. Then you play the second string open. So it's one, two, three, you're playing the index finger, plucking it upwards, and again, you're still holding the E chord, the pinky. One, two, three. And then the, uh, the next five notes are going to be this signature lick. <clears throat> and to play that, once you play the, the first three notes, one, two, three, the next five notes are gonna sound like this. While holding the E chord, the pinky comes up to the third string, and you'll play the, the third fret, third string, and then you'll pull, you'll pull off there and play the, while holding the E chord, you play the second fret, third string. Oh, actually, the pinky then slides over to the uh, the third string second fret. One, two, it's this minor second interval. It's third fret, second fret on the third string. One, two, and then the pinky will come off and you will play the open string on the third string while holding the E chord, sort of. It's an E minor chord now and then you'll lock in back to the E chord again by coming to the third string first fret. And then that last note is the fourth string second fret. So in all it's one, two, three, four, five. And then you end with the top string open. So in all, the combination from the beginning is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you play the top string open. See what? And then with the speed, you're you're holding the E chord and you're letting the pinky play the notes on the third fret, and then the index finger is gonna pop off and play the notes on the first fret. But again, it's all extracting notes out of this scale. <clears throat> and slow, slowed up, it sounds like this. And in this 
this song, he always injects this lick at, at the kind of tail ends of, of the lyrics and the stanzas. Uh, <clears throat> so it's, uh, I believe I have my sweet mother's heart in my hand, in my hand. He just injects it while he's singing, so the timing is going to be very tricky. But nonetheless, this is a very important lick and uh, to get down pat. So he, he plays this lick, the top string, then he goes to the bottom string, plays that open, and then he's gonna play a combination of four notes while holding the E chord, you're playing this. You're doing a lick that's gonna start off by playing the top string open, you're holding the E chord, and the index finger is going to play the third fret open string as the next note. And then again, with the index finger, you pull off and come back to the first fret third string. So it's one, two, three, and then the last one was the bottom string uh, open. One, two, three, four. this kind of slowly and gradually building up to the first official verse and the stanza where he's singing. So that's the introduction. Again, it's incorporating this blue scale and from the beginning it will sound like this. Characteristic introduction, and um, so that's the uh, some of the hardest parts in the song, and it gets a little bit easier. So now we can move forward to the introduction. So that's the second page if you have the ebook. And so in the in the first stanza, he's the music that he's playing sort of is softly played in the background. His voice becomes very pronounced. And he's playing, uh, he's still hovering around this E chord, and he's, so the first five notes, I'll just play this stanza slowly as best as I can. But he's kind of loosely playing the E chord, and he goes, I believe if I had my sweet woman taught in my hand. Something along that measure. I'll play it again a slower. I believe in my, my sweet woman son in my hand. And it's gonna be a little tricky to to uh, point out. But so for the first measure in this stanza, he begins by playing the top string open followed by two strums of the E chord, the E major chord. One, two, three, one, two, three. So he plays those sequences twice in a row. And somewhere in the mix of there, he starts to sing, I believe if I had my... I believe if I... I believe... He... He starts off there and it's somewhere in the mix, right? So those are the first uh, six notes there is these combinations. One, two, three, one, two, three are the six notes. And in the portion where he's singing, if I had my sweet woman's heart, he's playing, playing half of this riff that we talked about in the introduction. If I had my sweet woman's So he bypasses the bottom string completely and he just plays this riff starting from the second string. And he plays the third fret, second string, and the second string open, and then this five note sequence. And so when you put it together, it's uh, he, he quietly injects it in the background as he's singing. So he'll be like, I'm a, uh, I'll play it from the beginning. Say, 
in the lyrics, he sneaks in that um, riff. And that's the tricky part of uh, the verse. Very difficult to get the timing right. I believe if I had mine. So he, he injects that, and that's something we already covered, so I'm not going to go note by note there. But he injects that lick there. And then the second part of this verse, he continues with the singing and he'll say, Sweet one's on in my hand. And then in this portion, he plays that full riff from the beginning, starting from the bottom string. And that's something we already covered in the introduction. But in this slot, is he plays that full riff out, and that's over the portion where he's saying, singing in my hand. Uh, so it's in my. I believe I must have had my sweet woman's heart in my hand. In my hand. And the, and yeah, it's the portion where he goes in my hand. It's very hard to sneak that in, but again, I'm telling you that this riff is always going to make, make uh, an appearance in a lot of these one chord verses. And again, you're holding the E chord and you're letting the pinky play out the individual notes. This is basically 100% pure MacTel, right? So, so he plays that riff. And then he ends on an E7 chord. You can play that a few times. So the first verse altogether is exactly what it is. You're sneaking in these riffs quietly in the background as he's singing. So I'll play it from the absolute beginning. And uh, we'll try to make it work. So, okay, I'll go ahead. Seven, so I believe if I had my sweet one's on in my hand, it's it's very difficult. I cannot <laughs> I cannot really explain note by note. These are the intricacies of the song, but again, it's faintly being played in the background. But at least you know the mechanisms and the riff structure to work the timing out on your own. All right, so, so that together, we've talked about the introduction and the verse and the key signature riffs that are going to reappear throughout the song. So now let's go, uh, go ahead and move to the four chord position of the song. All right, so moving forward, we're, we're going to talk about the four chord position of the song. And this is something I already talked about in Writing Paper Blue. So if you've watched that, this is going to come very easily to you. But the four chord position is going to be, is naturally going to be the A chord, the A major chord, and then the A7 combination. But he plays it the long way, so. All right, we'll, we'll go over that real quick. And in order to do that, he begins this this, uh, this A chord sequence by playing the top string open and then the fifth string open. So it's like an E and an A. And it's a great transitionary bass uh, note that leads into the four chord position. And it locks in that long A7 chord. So to play a long A7 chord, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bar the fourth string on the second fret all the way down to the first fret. You bar that with the index finger. And then with the pinky, you're gonna hold down the bottom string on the fifth fret. Typical folk ragtime chord. And then the thumb plays the fifth string open. Then while barring this down on the second fret, the, the middle finger is gonna play the third fret bottom string. So it would make it an A7. 
So he's going from a long A to an A7. Very straightforward and easy. <clears throat> and so, so this measure here is where he also sings, I believe if I had my sweet woman's heart in my hand. <clears throat> so the, the first four notes of that are this bass accompaniment introduction played with the thumb. One, two, then you lock in the a, long A chord and then you play the A7 chord right away. So those four notes are one, two, three, four. And he plays that twice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And while he's holding that A7 chord, he takes off the bottom string, third fret, and then he plays the bottom string, second fret, and then he ends on the second string, fifth fret, as the final two notes in that sequence. And so it's, from the beginning, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The final two notes. I believe if I had my sweet wounds on in my hand. And then end with the top string open. So that's that four chord slot, the long A and A7 combination. It's very easy and straightforward to understand. And after he plays that, he goes back to the one chord, back in E, and he plays something like this. <clears throat> and again, it's, it's uh, extracting notes out of this E blues scale. So the, the first sequence in here is really tricky. It's this... Uh, minor second interval riff, which I refer to it in the book here. And what he's doing is is this minor second interval combination that's happening on the third string, uh, third string, third fret, and then the second uh, fret, third string. Again, he's borrowing from Lemon Jefferson. about Phrygian, Phrygian ideas derived from Blind Lemon Jefferson because he's from Dallas, Texas, and you have a lot of Mexican music finding its way into Blind Lemon Jefferson's music and then finding its way into Blind Willie McTell. So amazing historical um, reference in American music, the influence of Mexico. It's wild. All right, so to play this this first riff, it's a combination of six notes, and while holding an E chord, you will play the third fret, third string, then play the second string open, and then back to the third fret, third string, then you take the pinky, shift over to the third string, second fret, play that twice, then play the bottom, uh, top string open. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. The typical Bon Lemon Jefferson leg. from one of his songs that I don't remember the particular Je Lemon Jefferson song but it's like a carbon copy of the same riff structure so in this riff it's sort of like he plays it in the background in my hand is where he sings and it's in my hand <laughs> in my hand in my hand that first part 
and then he locks into this riff again. So the combination is in my hand, in my hand. And then he plays that riff and then he goes back to this lick again. The four note combination where you play the top string, then holding the E chord you play this lick on the third string, open, then the first fret, and then play the bottom string open. So in all, it's from the beginning. And it's played faint in the background. And you'll have to strategically play it as you're singing. It's really hard with this song. Um, but once you get the familiarity and the speed, it will be easier uh, to make that transition. All right, so now we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to move forward to the five chord and such. All right, so now we're going to move into the five position for this first stanza, which is going to sound like this. I believe I could teach you how to treat a real good man. I believe I could teach you how to treat a real good man. And if you've watched my writing paper blues, I, t I talk about in detail how to play those chords. So again, you're playing the St. Louis style turnaround and you're gonna be referencing the C, the B7, C7, and C sharp seven chords. You're gonna finger a B7 chord, right, like this, but you're gonna remove the index finger so you're just playing the notes on the individual fret itself. And then when you, you're going to shift, uh, you're going to shift to the third fret and then finally to the fourth fret, maintaining the same fingering. So to, to lock in this, this figure, you're starting on the second fret and then you're sliding into the fourth fret. One, two, three. I believe I could. He locks into there, into the fourth fret, the C sharp seven, and when he slides into there, he's going to pick out the individual strings like a sort of half arpeggiated way of playing it. So you'll play the next three notes are going to be while you're holding this chord on the C sharp seven, you'll play the fifth string, fourth fret with a thumb then the index finger or the thumb on the third string fourth fret. One, two, and then you play the bottom string fourth fret with the index finger. One, two, three. One, two, three. And this is, he, he stays on the fourth fret a little bit longer. It's a, it is, there's more of a, a rest, a pause before he goes into the third fret. So you play the three notes, then you'll shift over to the third fret, maintaining the same fingering. And then the same three notes, one, two, three. Then you'd go to the second fret and play the same three notes before resolving on an E major chord. So the sequence is, I believe I could teach her how to treat a real good man. I believe I could teach her how to treat a real good man. But it's supposed to be played pretty fast. I believe I could teach her how to treat a real good man. And that's something I discuss in detail even further in writing paper blues if you haven't watched it already. So that's the five position, which you'll always come back to in the song. So once you have that down pat, you're good to go. So then after, <clears throat> after he plays that, he goes back and, and he plays all of these wild riffs again, based out of this E blue scale. Yeah, so 
So the part after this, then he plays. Again, he's he's playing more riffs. So the pr first part of that riff is you play the E chord, and then you're gonna play this. Uh, a strange lick here, which, which is going to consist of seven notes. You'll play, while holding the E chord, you'll play the third string, third fret. Then you'll play the uh, bottom string, second, uh, the second string open. One, two. Then you go back to the third string, third fret. Then shift over with the pinky to the second fret, third string. And then you'll play play the first fret third string and then play the third string open and then resolve on the fourth string second fret so in all it's one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven then play the bottom string open and the top string open to end that. So it's a quick lick, again based on the minor second interval uh, concepts there. So he plays that riff, and you'll just have to follow along with the tablature. And then the second part of that is he'll play this. And to play that, it will be a combination of eight notes in all. You play the bottom string. Then you play the second string, third fret, then play the second string open, third fret, third string, then second string open, and then you'll play this lick on the E chord. On the third string, open, first fret, third string, and on the fourth string, second fret. And again, it's this scale. That's what he's doing throughout this whole song, is just injecting these... So that's that lick there, and then he ends with uh, the, the three strum combos of the E chord. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. He ends with a pair of those. And then he leads into the next stanza, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, here next. <clears throat> All right, so the next stanza is, is even trickier. There's not too many wild riffs being played here, but the first part of the stanza, he's sitting on this E chord and he's singing, I drink so much whiskey, mama, I can hardly talk. And again, it's you're you're playing this combination on the E chord, E major chord, and he sings, I drink so much whiskey, mama. And after he sings whiskey mama, he he, he plays this minor second interval combo again. Goes from the third string, third fret, to the second fret, third string. I drink so much whiskey, mama, I can hardly talk. I drink so much whiskey, mama. Yeah, and you'll hear it in there. This minor second interval pops out a lot at, when I hear the uh, recording. I drink so much whiskey, mama. And 
then when he says, I can hardly talk, he, he keeps playing that E major chord. I drink so much whiskey, mama. I can hardly talk. I can hardly talk. And then the other half of this stanza is, I can hardly talk. Hardly talk. So he repeats hardly talk, and this is where he'll play uh, an E6 and E7 combo, which we looked at in Writing Paper Blues. And he'll play it at, the, at this part of the stanza. So I have to kind of play this from the beginning to explain where that falls. So again, it's... I drink so much whiskey, mama, I can hardly talk. Holly talk. And it's the and the part where he repeats hardly talk is where he'll play E, E6, and E7. And E6, remember, is an E chord with the pinky playing the second string on the second fret. Holly talk. Holly talk. Holly talk. Holly talk. Is where he plays that. And then the other part of the stanza is Sweet Mama Holly Talk. And in the part where it says Sweet Mama Hardly Talk, he'll play two strums of E, and then he'll play this quick uh, riff with four notes, which will sound like this. This minor second interval shows up again. So it's two strums of E major, and then you'll play the while holding the E chord. You'll play the fourth fret, sec, uh, fourth string second fret. Then with the pinky comes up and plays the third string third fret again. Then shift over to the second fret third string. Back to the fourth string second fret. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and then play the top string open. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Sweet mama, holly talk. Holly talk. And that's the, the tricky part in this song is playing those minor second riffs, injecting it while you sing. That's the hard part of it. Then he plays the, the classic riff after that. He'll always revert back to this as a way to cap off the stanzas. And then he'll end on an E7 chord. Sweet mama holly talk. And the E7. Then he goes to that fourth position. I drink so much whiskey, I can hardly talk. That's that four chord position. Right? So now we can go to the, to the second page. Uh, the third page. I drink so much whiskey, I can hardly talk. Then after he plays that four chord, he goes back to the E chord, the one chord position, and it will sound like this. And again, he he in this portion he goes back to this minor second interval lick. So it's drink so much whiskey, I can hardly talk, hardly talk. And to play this minor second interval, it's it's again you're you're focusing the riff on the third string over the first, second, and third fret. So 
So it's got this Phrygian, Mexican influence that's coming from Lemon Jefferson again. Alright, so yeah, so he injects this minor second interval lick and, and to do that you'll play the E chord first, then you'll, with the pinky, uh, with the index finger actually play the first fret third string, then with the pinky play the third string third fret, second fret third string, then open, and then end on the fourth string second fret. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Is that first part of that? And then he goes back to the signature lick again. And then to the five position where he goes, Well, it's on out of my brain, so people like in Hollywood. And that's the five position, which we've already went over. And then after that, more features of the second interval lick. holding the E chord you play one two three four five so again it's we we've talked about this riff again it's you play the E chord then you play the fourth string uh, second fret then down to the third string third fret shift over to the uh, third string second fret play the third string open and back on the fourth string second fret one two three four five while holding the E chord then he plays the classic riff again and then you play an E major so those are the first we've covered the first two stanzas which he's He's always going to be here in the first position, playing the E chord and playing the the melodies, the riffs, ascending, descending off of this E blue scale. All of the action is happening on the first, second, and third frets. Then the the A major chord, and then the five chord, and apply accordingly. So now this song gets a even more difficult as we're going to go shift over to the ninth and twelfth frets. Is where the song is headed now so we'll take a little break and come back to that all right so now we're gonna get into the song where McTell is playing down over here on the 12th fret it'll sound a little like this It's the part of the song where he goes, Oh, mama, uh, he'll lead into this. Oh, my poor heart, we've been wearing. Baby, when you drove me away, drove me away. Sweet mama, you drove me away. There's a lot happening there. Very difficult to, to go along with the lyrics, but. I've talked about this extensively in Stoll Rider Blues and Writing Paper Blues is when McTell comes and plays the long D or the long E, E7 chords. So Writing Paper Blues, I, I mentioned it in detail how to go about it. So if you've watched that, this is going to be a lot easier. <clears throat> so in, McTell is going to come into a portion of songs and the next three stanzas are all going to be happening here on the ninth through the 12th frets, you're going to be playing long E and E7 chords. Kind of like A, A7, but this time we're down here on the 9th and 12th frets. And in order to lock that in, what he always does is 
he'll play three notes, play the top string first fret, and then slide all the way to the 12th fret, and then play the top string after that. One, two. And that's the way to lock in this long E7 chord. And that's how he kicks it off. And to play the long E and E7 chord, what you're going to do is, is with your index finger, you're going to bar the ninth fret from the fourth string down. Nice string down. This is always going to be, always going to be um, barred like this on the ninth fret to play these chords. This is always going to be stationary. The pinky is going to play the notes on the twelfth fret. So the, the pinky comes up, plays the bottom string on the 12th fret, makes this an E7, or a in major E chord. Now the middle finger is going to come and play the bottom string on the 10th fret, making it an E7. So the, the middle finger and the pinky are going to be crucial in playing these uh, notes to come. <clears throat> so, so we've got that down pat. Again, the positioning is crucial here. <clears throat> so now that we have that, in this first part, he plays uh, kind of a, a chord sequence. Um, he, he leads into it with this riff, plays the top string open. And then the first thing he does is play this long E chord, followed immediately by the E7 chord. So it's one, two, then he plays a top string open, and he goes back to major E, top string, E7. So it's like a, a finger picking pattern. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> so th those are the, the, the first kind of six notes here. You lock into the long E chord and play. And here he doesn't sing. And it's played sort of loosely. And then this next part is going to be very tricky. So here he plays... Oh, how my poor heart weeped and worry, baby, when you drove me away, you drove me away, I know you drove me away. <laughs> and so, uh, so the, the, the melody sequence here will sound like this. To do that, you'll you'll first play the uh, you'll make this fingering here. You'll play the major E chord, and you'll play the bottom string with the index finger. Then go play the E7 chord, play the tenth fret bottom string, then take the middle finger off and play just the bottom string ninth fret. So it's one one two three one two three. Then he takes the pinky and the middle finger shift up to the second string and you play the same three note combo there. So it's second string 12th fret, then with the middle finger you play the 10th fret second string, and then take that pinky uh, middle finger off and just play the second string on the 9th fret. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then he plays the third string ninth fret by itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And after he plays the third string on the ninth fret, he goes back and plays the long E major chord. A full chord there as the eighth note in that sequence. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And 
he plays that two times in a row. So in this portion when he's playing the melody goes Oh my mind we didn't worry Baby when you drove me away Oh my boy we didn't worry Baby when you drove me away And it's the the music is played kind of softly in the background and his voice becomes very pronounced Oh how my poor heart whipped and worried Baby when you drove me away So he plays that twice in a row And then when he repeats you drove me away What he's doing there is he'll play holding this position down He'll play the second string ninth fret then the middle finger comes and plays the 10th fret 2nd string and then the pinky plays the 2nd string on the 12th fret. Drove me away, you drove me away and then you play the top string open. You drove me away, drove me away. Then the next part is Sweet mama, you drove me away. And that part is, you'll play first a little half alternating finger picking pattern, you play the top string, and then barring the ninth fret, you play the fourth string ninth fret. Sweet, the part where he says sweet, one, two, and then you're gonna have a combination of four notes here, and you're gonna play uh, the the, this position here, the major E chord, and then the pinky is going to bar the, the 12th and 11th strings. Uh, the 12th, yeah, on the 12th fret, the 1st and 2nd strings. And you'll play one note there, then the 2nd string 12th fret. One, two, then you'll play the uh, E7 chord. Yeah, the E7 chord twice. So it's one, two, three, four. So for the beginning, it's sweet mama drove me away. Drove. One, two, three, four. So it's again one, two, three, four, five. And the part where he sings, drove me away. This next part now is going to be, you'll you'll have this positioning here on the E major chord, and you'll play the 12th fret second string, then go to the 10th fret second string, then the 9th fret second string. Drove me away, e, and then end on the ninth fret third string. Drove me away, and then end on the top string. And then the final part of this is E major, then E7 chord. So the way to go about this in this portion is just the melody is you're always going to be playing these combinations. And you're, you're matching it to the, the voicings accordingly. But that's all you gotta do is get down pat, is you have this, this bar positioning locked in, and the middle and the pinky finger are going to be playing all of those notes in that area. gonna uh, in the next few stanzas keep going here Joe so uh, so from the beginning I'll try to play it as best as I can you lock in the E chord E long E and E7 chords Try 
right, one more time. Let me try one more time. My hands are cramping up. My blood went to worry, baby, when you drove me away. You drove me away. Sweet mama, drove me away. Is when I play it, you'll, you'll have to play it relatively fast. So you're pairing the, the lyrics, the singing, to the fast play. And that's... That's why McTell is such at an advanced level. But you at least are being exposed to the mechanisms of what's happening here. Again, these individual notes here between the 9th and the 12th fret are going to kind of echo his singing. All right, so, and then, and then we'll go on to the, to the next part. Again, he goes to that four chord, and uh, we'll talk about that here. <clears throat> so moving further on in this third stanza, we talked about what's happening here. He then goes back to the four chord position. My mom, we didn't wait, baby, when you drove me away. And in the part where he plays this figure next, you drove me away. You drove me away. My flaw went away. Baby, when you drove me away, you drove me away. And it's again coming back to this minor second interval. So this figure, uh, when he repeats, you drove me away. He's playing this E chord, and then the pinky's gonna again, once again, come up to the third string, third fret, second fret, third string, and then uh, third string, first fret. And then play the bottom string open, followed by the top string. So it's like a five note combination. One, two, three, four, five. You drove me away. My poor we didn't wait, baby, when you drove me away, you drove me away, drove me away. And then he plays two strums of the E chord. And then he goes right away to that five chord. It was crying for poor MacTell some old rainy day. The five chord. And then this next combination is all over the place with these riffs. And the first part of this, he plays this. This minor second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, it's playing the third string, third fret. The second string open. Back to the third string, third fret. Second fret. First fret. One, two, three, four, five, six. The minor second riff. And then the next part of it is this. Which we covered already. It's those eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, extract your notes out of that E blue scale, and then he plays two E chords, and then he goes back to this minor second um, interval riff one more time. This makes an appearance twice. So again, that minor second interval riff is a combination of uh, seven notes. You'll finger the E chord, and then the pinky will play the third string, third fret. See how dissonant that sounds. You'll play that, then play the second string open, back to that third string, third fret. One, two, three, one, two, three. Then shift the pinky to the second fret, third string. Then play the first fret, third string. 
pull off, play the open string, third string, and end on the second fret, fourth string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then end with the bottom string open. really minor second interval again which features over and over throughout this song drive away blues again stealing from blind lemon jefferson he was a student of lemon jefferson so that's that part that follows and then the next stanza he comes back into this long e and e7 chord combinations so we got that down the way and we'll keep going and in this, and then this fourth stanza, he he'll he'll repeat what we went over again. So it's I come down, look down, mountain with down in Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls, see my run, Niagara Falls. And I'm not gonna go over note by note there, but again, it's repeating this. Plays that twice. And then he goes to the four chord. I went down looking mountain, went down Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls. Back to this minor second interval. Then he goes back to this classic riff. Then to the five chord. It seems like I can hear my Atlanta mama call. And then um, in the part where he goes, hear a call. More, more uh, riffs based out of that E blue scales follow. Uh, another minor second interval riff, hear a call. And, and and then for that fifth stanza, it's going coming back again to Don't fret and worry now, don't grieve after me, after me, sweet mama, after me. Don't fret and worry, don't grieve after me, after me. Cause I'm screaming and crying, cause I'm going back to ten. So the, he continues on um, with the same with the same sequences on the the long E and E seven chord. Even in the next stanza, it goes can't even write, can't even spell my name, spell my name, sweet mama, spell my name. Until the f ending of the song, somewhere there's a brief instrumental break somewhere towards the end of the song where McTell is sitting on the four chord and it's more pronounced and it'll sound like this. And, and here it's... What he's doing here is he kicks in that bass combination and he plays long A, A, A7 and then uh, this A chord fully barred on the second fret. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and plays the E chord. So that you'll you'll hear it in the song. It's an instrumental break 
that's over the four position. And it's in the part where he doesn't sing. And, and then you, you repeat the remaining concepts across whatever is left in the song. But to sum up what we've talked about is this Drive Away Blues is featuring exclusively this E blues scale in the first position. And he's also emphasizing a lot on this minor second interval between on the third string second fret the A and then the A sharp or B flat. It's Mexican guitar, Spanish. That's going to be a feature characteristic of that. The E chord and then in injecting those riffs. Then the typical long A, the St. Louis turnaround. And then the other portion of the song is playing this on the long E and E7 chords. And when you put it all together, you get this masterful composition in, in such a low tuning. But I love Drive Away Blue. It's one of my favorite songs performed by McTell. So now that we've got this song locked away, the final song in this series of lessons is going to be Searching for the Desert of the Blues, which repeats a lot of the things that we've looked at in writing paper blues and drive away blues. So that's going to come very easy to you. So again, the, uh, I'm going to close out this lesson. I, I've discussed everything that I've needed to. And uh, I appreciate your support. Again, subscribe to me on YouTube and like my Delta Lou Music Facebook page. That's where I post a lot of the news what's happening at Delta Lou Music. There's going to be much more lessons to come. We're focusing our attention on the folk and traditional folk and ragtime style of blues. Whereas the first two years we talked about the rugged delta sounds of Mississippi with the slide. Now we're getting folk traditions. So again, it's been a pleasure teaching this and keeping this music alive. When you download those books at home and you're playing those music, you're studying, you're keeping this music alive. That means I'm doing my job. Um, and preserving the integrity of this music. So once again, thanks so much, and I wish you all the best. Let me know if you have any questions.